Praise the Lord. I'm about done. But it, he, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't, he didn't, he just said, what have we got? What have we got? When you go out and somebody asks who your pastor is, they say, well, I don't like him. You look at him and say, listen, he's all we got. <laughs> you might have somebody else next year, but the long as this Jesus series uh, uh, comes, I'm all you got. You know, and, and I would just tell him, well, he's all we got. <laughs> uh, and he said, what do you got? Well, there's a little boy over here. How many times have you saw somebody start out preaching? You didn't, boy, they couldn't, they're nervous. You, <clears throat> I'm talking about myself now. They're nervous. They shook. I mean, first message I preached was about that long. You know, I remember what the scripture was and everything. And man, I didn't hardly know what it said. But, you know, I did what God had me to do. But physically, see, we got two people in here. Paul did too. Paul had them. Paul said when he wanted to do something, there was a part of him that warred against it. Yeah, there's a war going on inside you. Do you know that? If you're a Christian... There's a war going on in there. But you know what you got to do? You got to come to the point. You got a spiritual side, you got a carnal side. Talking about getting out the old carnal nature. Yeah, you, the old cruci man's crucified. You live for Jesus, you love him, and all else. But, brother, about the time you start doing something for God, I guarantee you that old natural side man will start sticking his head up. Trying to discourage you. Well, that, don't worry about it. That happens to all of us. All honest people. Some people might try to deny it. All honest people, that happens to them. I don't care how big a preacher they are or whatever they are. That happens. But what you do on that good side, that spiritual side, has to look at that natural side and say, let me tell you, we're in a war here, and I want to tell you right now, in Jesus' name, you're not going to win. Yeah. That's how we get through. Yeah. We tell the other side, you're not going to win. You can't. I ain't going to let you because I got somebody bigger than you are. Yes. Well, I'll get these people fed and we'll go home. But Jesus said, what we got here? We got lads, got some loaves and fishes and uh, there ain't nothing, you know. You know, sometimes, um, well, I'm talking about that bologna sandwich and that lunch box. Sometimes when it's all you got, it tastes pretty good, don't it? Yes, it uh, yeah, you liked it a little better. Now I guess we're eating better and all that. But when that's all you got, it looks pretty good. Amen. Thank God for it and eat it. Won't kill you. Might make you sick sometimes. You carry it in a lunchbox in 100 degree weather. But he said, what do you got? He said, this lad got loaves and fishes. Not much, two loaves, five fish, five loaves, two fishes, whatever. And uh, Jesus, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, it's a big crowd. I, I don't know. The disciples already said, send them away. Jesus instantly commanded them. He said, set them down. Yes. They're not leaving here yet. <laughs> set them down. I said, well, what do we sit them down? They're hungry. They need to go to the grocery. Piggly Wiggly or somewhere, you know. Anybody remember Piggly Wiggly? Yeah. Miss Daisy went to Piggly Wiggly, you know. And sit them down. 5,000 plus the women and children. Don't set them all down. Divide them up in companies. And when he fed those people on one occasion, and that Fish kept flopping, and the bread kept baking, and they kept eating until they all were filled, and they had 12 baskets left over. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Jesus not only can fill you, he can have you to run over now and then. I mean, I only fill you up here tomorrow, he didn't have enough left over to get you through Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday, 
Brother Riley said before church tonight, if you get a song, that wasn't what Brother Riley said, but if you get a song. He said, we didn't have church last Sunday night and Wednesday night. He said, it seemed like a month. Or I said, it did. I said, it long with time. I said, you know, it seemed like so long. But you know what? I didn't backslide. I had enough to get me through. Because Jesus is with you when you can't be there. And it's your choice not to, if you're not your choice to be there. Jesus is with you. Take care of you. Praise the Lord. Jesus is with you. Little is much if God is in it. Labor not for wealth and fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go. Here it is. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. No other name under heaven. Jesus is Lord. The Bible said that. I didn't think it up. Jesus is Lord. I told somebody this week, we was talking about um, moving down to see Helen Crumbo. She's going in to have surgery. And we came out. She said, be careful about the ice and everything. And I said, well, Helen, you know, I walked on water yesterday. She said, you did? I said, yeah, I walked on that ice. I was coming out of the hospital, and I was out there, and I went like this. I didn't tell Midge this, because she told me to be careful. I slipped and went, one knee went down, and landed, didn't hurt me or nothing. But I was in good prayer position in case I did, but anyway, <laughs> I walked on water, you know. Little as much. Listen, do your best for God, and I'm telling you, there's no kind of telling what kind of church we can have. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, if there's not a house full, we can still have a great, glorious church. If Jesus is here, try it without him, we got nothing. Let us stand and sing. I promise you, I wouldn't.